Hello and welcome to Big Picture. I'm Vishal Dahia and today we're going to talk about the global corporate tax and India. Obviously, the concept here is about bringing in the minimum rate of corporate tax at a global level. And what has happened is that the finance ministers of G7 countries have recently reached a historic deal on putting in place a global corporate tax. And the minimum rate which has been fixed is at 15%. We'll try and understand various aspects of this global corporate tax and also the way it will affect India. For more on this, uh, we're joined by two distinguished experts. Let me first introduce them to you, beginning with uh, Mr. Dilip Chinoy, Secretary General of uh, FIKI is with us. We also have uh, Shubhmai Bhattacharji, Consulting Editor with the, the Business Standard. Uh, welcome, both of you gentlemen. Let me begin with you, Shubhmai. Let's start by understanding both the context uh, and, and also the decision, the contours of the decision which has been taken by the finance ministers of G7 countries vis-a-vis -vis the global corporate tax. Well, you know, Michel, the context is uh, rather wide. As it so happened, uh, you know, over decades, countries like uh, both on that side of the Atlantic, that's USA, this side, uh, India and China, they've been saying that, like, you know, we have the big companies and uh, the multinational companies, but typically multinational companies follow the system of locating the headquarters wherever the tax rate is the lowest. And uh, there has been a fair amount of study on this, the OECD, uh, which is actually not just an organization of the rich countries, but it's also got a very strong taxation policy understanding arm. Mm -hmm. That had done a study on what is called the business uh, base erosion and profit shifting, the BIP study, to basically see that, you know, that this phenomenon that companies have got presence in a particular company, but they're located somewhere else, as the headquarters somewhere else, where the tax rate is lower. So the company effectively ends up paying tax at a much lower rate. Okay. And uh, typically, the smaller companies have that advantage. So because of that, um, smaller countries have offered that advantage. Ireland, for instance, uh, there are other these uh, countries littered on the, on the Atlantic shore, those countries. As a result, um, uh, big countries lose out on tax revenues. And now with the issue of inequality and others coming up, which we can talk about later in the program, mm -hmm. uh, there was, there's been a study of pressure that it shouldn't end. So what the G7 group is saying, and now it will travel to the G20, is that we should have a minimum 15% tax rate, as you just announced, on all multinational companies irrespective of whichever place where they are. So that advantage of what is called country shifting or treaty shopping should not stay. The country, okay. these countries will pay 15%. That's it. Okay. Okay. Mr. Chinoy, uh, your views there on this, uh, you know, slab which has been fixed, uh, minimum uh, rather rate, which is at 15%, uh, the uh, so-called global corporate tax being, uh, you know, decision being arrived by uh, the G7 finance ministers. And as Shubhmoy was explaining the context here, obviously to deal with, uh, you know, the issue of tax avoidance. Uh, and, uh, you know, the, the question here is, uh, how does corporates view it, uh, not only in India, but also from a global point of view? I think uh, there'll be obviously two different views uh, globally, right? In India, uh, in the manufacturing uh, policy that was announced in, in uh, the budget of last year, where you gave a, you know, a reduced uh, interest rate for those companies that who set up manufacturing by uh, you know 2023, there were 15% uh, tax rate uh, there, and then you know reducing the tax rate up to a certain turnover of about 25%. Mm -hmm. So in the Indian context, you know it it brings a kind of uh, equality to those people who may be operating in India, but maybe not located here and therefore not paying any taxes, etc. Or something that could be one uh, you know uh, view. But mm -hmm. globally, in the if you look at it. Uh, those who are actually operating and you know located in some reason in some areas, and also those that have been given uh, specific uh, concessions uh, by uh, either uh, you know a state or a country uh, to locate them, give them a, a kind of a reduced rate. I think uh, the challenge would be how do you address those uh, those instances and how do you go forward. I think generally among the G7, there was, you know, a, a kind of an understanding of a minimum flow rate and 
also very very uh, very interesting concept of market countries right uh, was 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 uh, was actually put forward and you know i think there is also uh, 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 you know a thought behind this was that many countries were thinking of a digital transaction tax or a different kind of a tax because people were doing business in the country but not being located there and therefore not being taxed mm -hmm. so i think there is this is a very welcome move to actually address uh, those different challenges that many countries are facing but again if you are a country if you are a company who is taking advantage of it and legally taking advantage of it and going forward then you know you'll have to re reorient your business practices you might have a view and whereas other companies who will see it as a as a level playing field okay okay so indeed it can be looked at it from uh, both angles you know are those uh, who might benefit in the corporate world because of these decisions and there obviously as uh, mr chenoy is pointing out would be certain corporations uh, who will have to reorient themselves uh, let me uh, bring uh, you know shubhmoy here on the challenges part shubhmoy this looks like a very very uh, you know good plan uh, uh, as uh, both of you are pointing out uh, mr chenoy is also saying but there seems to be a lot of challenges also because uh, taxation first of all is the sovereign right of every nation well that per se that is a very important point that you're making uh, shall that yes taxation is the sovereign right of any nation so essentially does it mean that from going here, from here onwards any country's tax rights on corporation tax will be determined by a forum like a g20 of course uh, we must say that there is a rider there it says that it's 15% and above 15% you know the countries retain the um the right to uh tax 20% of the profits above that threshold but essentially you're setting a floor but the inter more interesting part is it is obviously something that helps the g7 but let's look at a country like say bangladesh mm -hmm. bangladesh does not have too many advantages to offer one of the things that bangladesh offers is a special economic zone and most of its benefits most of the companies which have made bangladesh what it is we have been roughly we have been talking a lot about per capita income rising in bangladesh operate in those zones where corporate tax rates are different now what happens to those zones remember europe or america doesn't have much of special economic zone they don't need to because typically the infrastructure problems that are supposed to be handled by the special economic zones are not there in europe and america uh, europe and in usa or canada but they are pretty relevant they used to be very relevant in, they are still are very relevant in china and they are very relevant in lots of asia mm -hmm. what does it mean that countries here will not be able to play around with the tax rates for the special economic zones and remember the special economic zones have had a major role in ensuring many of the east asian economies become the tiger today for instance bangladesh is following that role malaysia is following that role what happens to them we in india have been talking about special economic special tax rates in those zones as they pointed out okay. what happens to our companies do they for instance get lower tax rates or do we say that for domestic companies the tax rates can be lower but mm -hmm. for multinational rates would be higher you know this is where as you rightly pointed out michel that there would be issues that would be coming up and these issues would need to be uh, sort of worked out before we really see something like a global taxation regime coming along yeah. okay Okay, uh, Mr. Chennai, uh, do you agree there that uh, you know the fine print of uh, uh, this decision being taken by uh, the G7 finance ministers of uh, putting in place a minimum 15% of global corporate uh, tax uh, might not be that conducive to uh, the developing economies, some of them at least? No, oh, I think let's let's uh, break the break the decision. Uh, you know, the G7 decision, decision by decision. The first decision is that. Uh, to force uh, multinationals to pay taxes where they operate right that's the first decision the second decision is saying that there must be a global minimum uh, corporate tax rate of 15% to avoid countries undercutting each other mm -hmm. right and it's you know there is there could be you know in the g20 you know, the idea was to take this to g20 right 
and then in the G20 there could be a broader agreement on the first principle that you know everybody should be taxed uh, uh, at uh, you know uh, in the market where they operate and the second one would actually you know uh, may have some discussion and you know people might have want carve outs uh, for uh, you know specific SEZs etc cetera, etc cetera. and then you know then there is a there is a third aspect in, in, in the details is you know how do you look at the uh, you know equitable solution of allocating taxation rights uh, you know uh, saying marketing countries could be uh, given at least 20% of profits, uh, mm -hmm. you know, exceeding a 10% margin. It's slightly complicated, but, you know, I think that's another, that is the fine print and details which are there. So, and, you know, the idea is to trade off the digital uh, service taxes and other uh, service taxes against this because then that, uh, it actually, you know, impacts some companies. So there are multiple parts of the, uh, you know, of the decision, one, two, three, et cetera. So I think in the G20, we'll, we'll be going to see, I think everybody will fundamentally agree to the first concept that everybody has to pay tax, right? And I think in the market where they operate is a very simple uh, kind of solution. The, okay. the second part is what should be the minimum, et cetera. I think there, there will be a lot of discuss and debating. Maybe like in the WTO, there will be developed, developing, least developing, or you know, some, you know, uh, some sort of uh, things would be done. But I think they were trying to address two issues. One was multi-layering by corporations, which, you know, actually uh, from subsidy to subsidy, et cetera, et cetera. And the second was headquarters located in a tax-free uh, haven, et cetera. So I think mm -hmm. these are the two types of things that they were trying to address. And I believe that in the, when the G20 discussions happen, you'll see a lot more clarity emerging. Okay, definitely. We'll come to the tax division part there as well. But since uh, we are on this issue of uh, how, uh, you know, uh, it will impact the developing economies, uh, Mr. Chinoy, uh, your views first on the, uh, you know, the, the, the impact it might have uh, on, 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 you know, India and then specifically the uh, sort of attraction uh, we India has uh, as, as an investment destination for uh, many, many companies. Uh, uh, and, and, and the way, uh, you know, the corporate tech structure stands in India today and the way it, we might have to rework it uh, based on the global norms which are being talked about and being decided and discussed uh, in forums like G7. No, so if you look at corporate tax, right, at this point of time, uh, other than the special economic zones, I think many of those are coming to an end also, but others are coming to an end in a specified period uh, of time, right? You will see that most of... Uh, the taxation is above the 15%, 15% or above, right? The exception being the, the manufacturing, uh, you know, uh, kind of here for the Indian companies. But for the companies not headquartered in India and which are headquarters elsewhere, right? That's going to, that's going to be an impact for them. And then they have to decide whether, you know, uh, it makes sense to pay 15% uh, tax in India. I mean, if they don't want to operate in India, that's a separate thing. But I don't think that many companies do not want to operate in India. Mm -hmm. And I, I believe that they will, they will be, you know, looking forward to pay uh, a 15% tax uh, on, on that. But again, it, you know, it doesn't attract, the, it doesn't affect the current uh, investments which are already there in India. But like, like Shubhamoy said, if you're wanting to set up a special economic zone or a park and you want to give uh, incentives to companies to, you know, to invest... Then, if this is not allowed, that will be a challenge, and I think they'll find a carve out for that kind of a situation. Okay. I think okay. you know because in those countries there's no carve out. The countries, the low tax countries that they are talking about, and the tax havens, there is no carve out. There's any investor wanting to head, uh, you know, invest there with a certain size and certain presence, you know, you get the same uh, treatment. Okay. Okay. Shubha, your views there on the impact it might have on the uh, you know Indian growth story there. Well, you know, one of the first things is that, uh, as uh, Dari frankly pointed out, uh, most of our companies still are not there on the 15%. So, if initially we do have room to bring the taxes rate tax rates down, uh, of course, it will depend on what uh, companies calculate in terms of uh, tax rates coming down vis-a-vis -vis the exemption that they already have. Uh, that's for the tax experts to agree. But I'm uh, reading on the bare. Uh, uh, the details that have been worked out, and normally it, it would seem that we still have some chances to go southward, which is an advantage. The point is mm -hmm. that once an international com commitment is made, that you know it'll be 15%, then it'll be very difficult for a national government to 
to say whom to who stays on 15 and who doesn't so it sort of it sort of becomes a blanket not only a floor but also the ceiling that is the rate at which you will operate so that okay. introduces okay. an amount of rigidity which might be difficult for companies and uh, for countries and and the bigger thing is somebody has to calculate that what supposing if there's this 15% rate with uh, just a slight advantage that uh, that one can work out how much does it mean in terms of corporation tax rate if it is known that this is the rate and this is the amount that will be getting that means the rest of entire tax burden has to be shared by someone so it will either be the income tax rates which means the people that means uh, everybody else mm -hmm. or the indirect taxes because ultimately as we all realize coming out of the covid the governments of countries like india will be needing more and more resources so the risk while usa is battling a problem or uk eu is battling a problem of you know the uh, the, the uh, low tax uh, jurisdictions like ireland or bahamas or cayman island taking away the advantage we don't have that problem at least in not that significant rate but okay. for us the problem is that if that 15 and 15 becomes a flattish thing then possibly a large part of the remaining tax because governments would need to tax otherwise they'll have to borrow will come on on other taxes so can that be on and if we don't do that tax then the companies will decide to move so you know it could actually create a bit more problem for developing countries like india i mean i mean so until, until we see the numbers i mean I'm, i that's why one one has to be a bit more careful about touching these sort of things yeah. okay 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 let's let's come back to uh, you know to the to the major uh, objective of this decision which has been stated there that's to you know tackle the tax evasion part and uh, uh, you know obviously deal with uh, uh, the, the the way uh, you know nations uh, have to uh, sort of uh, let go of uh, the uh, tax which they believe uh, they're entitled to, but it doesn't happen because of all these uh, intricacies and complexities involved, uh, and uh, obviously the presence of tax havens there as well. Uh, Mr. Chinoy, you know, how effective do you think this plan of putting in place a minimum global corporate tax will be to tackle or to deal the issue with the issue of tax evasion per se specifically okay so vishal there are two parts to it one is paying tax and second is the quantum of tax right now if by this method you know on profits right uh, and they have got some formula there on profits you will have to pay 15% in the market that you operate mm -hmm. okay so now the challenge here is that in terms of paying that 15% tax, that will happen. But is the 15% really a 15% or they have found some other ways to actually, you know, innovative accounting methods to whether it's transfer pricing or whether it is other mechanisms, et cetera, uh, to be able to, you know, reduce in effect uh, the amount of tax that they pay is the challenge. So I think the common belief is that in terms of taxation, yes, this is a good move, but in terms of tax evasion, this is not fully there, it's part of the way there, uh, and it will impact at least certain companies will become more transparent uh, in terms of, uh, you know, at least declaring something, but the accounting at the back and how they actually manage that, and that's the real challenge which everyone has to overcome. Okay, and then what more do you believe Mr. Chinoy needs to be done to uh, ensure that, you know, that that major objective of tax evasion is, is dealt with specifically? No, fundamentally, you know, you, 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 have, you have to have clarity on on, you know, how do you evade tax? You either, either increase expenses mm -hmm. or you show increased input costs, right? Okay, and since, you know, I mean, in, in India, since most of these companies nearly operate digitally, right? Uh, you know, uh, other than, you know, the two other companies that were mentioned uh, there, uh, you know, in, in which were, which were, one was a product company and one was a coffee uh, company, Indeed. right? Uh, so if you look at the other companies, they're digital, okay? So mostly everything would be uh, transparent there, but you know now you are getting into your self-branded, uh, you know, self-branded other things. You know, so it all depends on, on 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 that. So it's really transfer pricing one and the cost of inputs, and uh, you know how you calculate that. And that that has been actually this has been a bane in the existing system also. Mm -hmm. uh, for normal companies, uh, you know, 
operating in india these two things have been really uh, really the challenging thing and there's a huge litigation around it and lots of lots of you know uh, 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 discussion and debate okay okay so as an industry representative would it be uh, you know right if uh, uh, we uh, uh, understand that what you're trying to say here is that it's a good move but there's a long way to go the, yeah so the principle is good right we just need to ensure that the way it is implemented is transparent and very clear uh, so it doesn't you know involve uh, you know uh, people looking to leverage different loopholes it's like somewhat to put it very simply it's like what uh, the finance minister announced that if you want to continue in the in the in the existing regime of seeking exemptions your tax rate is you know 30% right but if you you know if you want to move to the new uh, uh, tax rate without claiming any exemptions or without doing it, your tax rate is x so i think okay. that's the type of uh, uh, you know type of approach we need here okay okay shubma your views there on the issue of tax evasion you know the the major challenge which uh, uh, looks like needs to be tackled with and obviously one of the goals here of putting in place a uh, global uh, minimum corporate tax uh, because tax evasion is an issue uh, which is a sort of a, a, a botheration point for almost every economy be it developed or developing and uh, we've seen it in our country as well specifically when you have to deal with digital companies absolutely i mean you know uh, on uh, tax evasion is something on which india has been taking the lead in terms of pushing the negotiations globally and uh, indian tax authorities have been pointing out that this is something that needed to have been brought up front rather than being you know pushed to the sidelines india has been really been pushing this agenda and rightly so uh, the very fact that uh, india as the major play center where companies do their business but companies do not pay the tax in fact the digital levy that india has been or which is known as the digital tax which india has levied was basically there has been built on this premise that if you are doing a business in india you should pay a tax and that's a very very fair premise mm -hmm. that is that is not absolutely nothing to be to cavil about uh it's also true that uh, once this deal comes through or in even before it starts coming through india shall be at an advantageous position to really negotiate lot of its double taxation avoidance agreements you know many of those agreements have issues on the tax rates and other things and who will tax and this is something on which india had been pushing the pedal but uh, there had been facing resistance so india will like have an advantage now and that is something to be look forward to because that is something that india is absolutely right that india's uh, the uh, the tax avoidance agreements have not been signed by several countries in the west with which india has been negotiating for years so india will have uh, more wing uh, more uh, wind on its uh, wings to be able to uh, negotiate those so there okay. are lots of those advantages that india will be reaping also the very fact as i say that india actually given its tax rates india will possibly be at an advantageous position Mm -hmm. because in the tax rates are currently at a position where india can afford to uh, give concessions and yet not fall short of of the international tax rates mm -hmm. so overall that, that gives india an advantage and uh, frankly speaking that means that at the g20 uh, india should be in a good position to say that you know remove all the uh, bushes and shrubs on the tax fronts and let us have a clear level playing field where countries like india and other countries can operate to have a proper tax or a proper tax field which is uh, which 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 works enormously to india's advantage okay okay there it is thank you so much uh, shubhmoy and uh, mr dilip chinoy both of you for sharing your views and insights on uh, this very important aspect as our experts uh, explained uh, the context of putting in place a global corporate tax at the minimum slab which has been fixed by the G7 nations at 15% as of now and uh, the impact it will have uh, not only on the issue of uh, tackling tax evasion but also uh, you know the developing economies specifically countries like india and its growth story we'll come back again with a different topic till then keep watching thank you